Eric Malum from California. You have some good offensive line. You have some outstanding wide receivers still on the board. A productive player like Shante Carver. Uh, like I said, picking down at this stage of the game, if you're smart, you can do a good job. All right, well, the Vikings uh, using all of their clock. They have uh, 13 seconds to go. Boy, the, the, the Dennis Green half hour. Well, could it be a trade? I think you get here, you know, it's one of those last second deals. Maybe somebody wants to get up there and get one of those wide receivers. Minnesota has well, selected. here's the pick. The Dolphins are now on the clock. Well, we just know that they pick, but it would be nice if they tell us, and they'll do that uh, momentarily. Uh, Miami is the next pick on the clock, so the Vikings uh, now, uh oh. This, let's see, now this is involved here. This is either trade, I don't think this is a pronunciation discussion. Well, here goes the card. Chris, you said four was a trade. What happens when there's eight and five people it's looking at it? It's in the huddle. See, they're sitting down here, so this, this is a pass. Hey, and Val has his glasses Wait on. Wait a minute. Well, let's see, could it be one of the, the Hawaiians oh. or Samoans? Val's writing in his pick. Huh? Now he will hand it off there. This is more than, this is an option offense that we're running here, Joe. Okay, with its uh, second choice here in the first round, the Minnesota Vikings select Todd Stuzzi, tackle, University of California. Well, the uh, Minnesota Vikings war room has worked very hard the last half hour, and they have gotten two very valuable picks. Hey, you just heard Mel mention a, a bookend tackle from Cal, Todd Stuzzi and a corner from NC State, and we all like Dwayne Washington, so value indeed to the Minnesota Vikings, and I agree, you know, Mel's not wrong because Deuce has got a great value, but yet all those wide receivers are still there. Before we move on to the next pick, which is the Dolphins, it's now time to flip the coin. Ooh. And for the first pick in next year's draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Carolina Panthers, this is evidence that, yes, they are real. Let's go up to Mike Tirico and company at the podium. Chris, thank you. They are real, and they are here, the Jaguars and the Carolina Panthers. First, let me introduce you to the folks who are here. Wayne Weaver, the owner of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Jerry Richardson, the owner of the Carolina Panthers. Also joining us with the commissioner on stage by remote from Charlotte and Jacksonville, respectively. Mike McCormick, the president of the Charlotte Panthers, and the Jacksonville Jaguars coach, GM, Tom Coughlin. With all the introductions out of the way, the coin flip for the number one selection in next year's draft. Here's Commissioner Tagliabue. Thank you, Mike. Uh, Wayne and Jerry, we're delighted to welcome you again as the 29th and 30th teams in the National Football League, but this is really gets to the competitive side of it now to see who will have the first pick in next year's draft and who will have the second pick, which is not quite as uh, sought after. We have a, uh, a special commemorative coin which uh, indicates that the Jacksonville was established on November 30, 1993. The Carolinas were established on October 26, 1993. You don't have to call anything. Whichever side comes up gets the first pick in next year's draft. Here we go. It's the Carolinas. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Wayne, congratulate you. Thank, thank you. you. Gentlemen, let me sneak in here. Jerry, an opportunity for you to talk to the president of your team, Mike McCormick, who is joining us live by satellite from uh, Carolina. Have any question for him now that you know you're number one in next year's draft? Well, the first thing I'll say to Mike is he was more optimistic about this than I was, and so congratulations to your optimism, Mike. We're thrilled about this. Mike, what do you, boss? You did it. <laughs> Giving it all to you, Mike, uh, let me ask you a quick question here in regards to this. If you would have had the number one selection in this year's draft, where would you have gone with it? You know, I don't believe in... Uh, just speculation. Uh, we would have done a good job, and uh, we would have make an out made an outstanding selection based on all the scouts we had. Well, congratulations. Of course, we'll be uh, very interested observers this time next year for the draft. Wayne Weaver, your team, Jacksonville, will select second. Let's uh, talk with you and uh, give you the opportunity to ask a question to your head coach, Tom Coughlin. Well, I just remind Tom to remind our fans that Lawrence Taylor and uh, <laughs> Tony Dorsett and Cornelius Bennett were all taken in the second pick. So that we, uh, we're we still in there. We're going to get a great athlete. Tom, I would imagine it's a, a very celebratory mood down there, and there are a lot of people gathered. My question for you, how do you look at philosophically building this team towards next year? Tom, are you there? 
as Tommy's having a problem here. And there's a party of about a thousand people you said in Jacksonville for this today? Yes, they're celebrating a uh, dream draft. Uh, dream draft, the uh, start of the uh, new era for we have Jacksonville. A lot of, we have a lot of great uh, Florida athletes on that board down there. So. <laughs> well, we look forward to having both of you guys here next year. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Let's go back to Chris Burke. Chris? All right, Michael, thank you. So obviously the reason that the Tom Coughlin didn't hear you was he's already busily at work on that second pick in the 95 draft. If you're wondering, the last time it happened, of course, 1976, Tampa won the coin toss with the Seattle Seahawks. They picked a darn good player in Leroy Selman, defensive end with the first pick. Uh, Seattle picked defensive tackle from Notre Dame, Steve Niehaus, who did not quite turn out as well as Leroy Selman. So that's what Carolina and Jacksonville are looking at next year, at least trying to duplicate the Selman pick. As we look 12 months ahead, Mel. Well, wait a minute, here's the Dolphins. Defensive tackle, Mississippi. Well, we had so much stuff going on that we want to get to the Dolphins pick first. And this is a very interesting selection by the Dolphins who moved down in the trade with the Packers and took Tim Bowens, defensive lineman, a guy who you talked about this morning moving up. But first things first, 95 draft, give us the names to look for. Well, these are the guys the Carolina Panthers and the Jacksonville Jaguars will be looking at next year. The number one guy overall should be Tyrone Wheatley, outstanding running back from Michigan, who would have been in the top two or three had he come out this year. Rob Johnson, quarterback from USC, had a great junior year with John Robinson, should be better next season. J.J. Stokes, the tall, angular receiver from UCLA. John Walsh, who tears up whack defenses with B. BYU, and Leland McElroy, I threw him in. He'll be a junior next year, but a game-breaker supreme. Leland McElroy from Texas A&M could be a Heisman Trophy candidate with the Aggies, and he would be the top pure game-breaker along with Tyrone Wheatley in the draft next year. John Walsh, huh? <laughs> well, there's an interesting name to, to some of us. Uh, Tim Bowens, Let, let's go to him right now. The Miami has just selected Tim Bowens, an, an interesting player to say the very least, Mel. Very much so. Back with the review last year in June, I said there were some comparisons already being drawn to a guy like Eric Swan because he was young. He played two years at the JUCO level. Didn't start until really the fourth game of this past season. Started seven games in total. Still had six and a half sacks, a ton of uh, tackles behind the line of scrimmage. Was an impact player in the tough SEC. He's 320 pounds, 40 times the range anywhere between 5.15 and 5.20. Not spectacular, but but he's a big kid who can jam up the middle of the line. And like I said on numerous occasions the last few days, he has been a guy who has moved up from maybe the second, third round into the mid to late first round. So he has made a quantum leap in terms of what kind of contract he's going to sign once he gets it wrapped up. Well, you call him the, the Eric Swan, perhaps, of this draft. And, and this is no medical problem at all because the teams have checked it out. But here's a young man that at a younger age lost three middle toes on his left foot because of a lawnmower accident has just two of the five toes, but obviously not a question, and all the teams have checked him out that, that is not an issue. And a lot of people had him rated better, better than Chester McLaughlin coming out of the Raiders took the first round a couple of years ago. Let's go to Hank Goldberg, who always has uh, his hand, his eyes on the pulse of the Dolphins. Uh, surprised, Hank? Not really. Uh, I was uh, talking with Coach Shula this morning, and this name came up after a few people who he wanted and had a conviction on. He said that if those guys were gone, he would either trade down or perhaps go with an offensive lineman. But this, the Dolphins, he, told, he was very clear. The Dolphins need somebody who can either be a run stopper or an inside or outside rusher. And that's what they feel this young man can be. Remember, John offered all is iffy. He's going to try and come back this June. And so that becomes even more important to get somebody to plug up that middle. And I guess he better protect all his toes because it's natural grass down there. <laughs> All right, Hank, thank you. Joe, you know, you look back a few years ago, the Dolphins went defensive line at 88 with Eric Comero, 87 with John Bowes, who didn't have any luck. Bowens, this is a large individual, biggest, about the biggest player I can think of Shula had up there. Uh, you know, I, I think you look at histories quite often of players and different teams. I think a history here is they have not had success in the defensive line. Bowens, to me, is, is a stretch. He has a wealth of talent. I don't doubt that. My problem is, is you're getting a football player that in his entire career has had 30 practices. That's all. 30 practices. He's only played in 10 games. He really hasn't had the training, the seasoning, the discipline, and everything 
everything that goes with becoming a first round pick, especially when you're looking at a draft like this where you've got to count on your guy coming in. I hope he makes it. I hope he has the ability that the Dolphins think he has. I think this is really, really a stretch for them. Well, they have, uh, some people thought they stretched a little bit when Marco Coleman, uh, is he linebacker, is he defensive line? He certainly filled out very well with their first round pick a couple years ago at defensive end. Now they get a larger one than Marco Coleman. When we return, the Lions are on the clock. Stay with us, please. We designed a new car. We created a new class. We developed new engineering. We created a new standard of performance. We redefined value. Introducing the Mercedes-Benz C-Class. It wasn't designed to compete with other cars. It was designed to replace them. The new C-Class starting at under $30,000. Liz, if it occurs to you, I need my airline tickets, huh? Oh, look, we're going to need you to pitch in on that budget analysis. You know, I'd love to, but, you know, I'm on the road at the Hyatt. Okay. Mr. Dennis, I can call the Hyatt, and they can get you a computer. And an in-room fax machine, so you can do all the work you need to do right there. Gee. Thanks, Liz. With Hyatt's new business plan, you can do a lot more business away from business. And you can get right to work in your room, sir. Have you met my secretary? We've thought of everything at the Hyatt's of Chicago. A punctual boy, our son. A punctual. All over the world, UPS drivers are the same. Ask their mothers. He's not rich. He's not handsome. But punctual. Mm. He was even born on time. They're obsessed with being on time. So UPS now guarantees on-time delivery to hundreds of cities around the world or your money back. If my son says he will be there, he will be there. It's a guarantee that not only has our driver's word on it, it has their mothers. He breaks out in a rush if he's late. I... Uh, excuse me, could you take uh, a picture of photo. us with no, photo over the there? <laughs> if you take off to the Italian town of Todi, but your camera just takes off, where'd they go? You better have Visa Gold, because there's not a camera store there that takes American Express. There's a great shot. Visa Gold, it's everywhere you want to be. All right, welcome back to the draft in New York. Before we move on to the Lions pick, the 21st overall first round selection. Now let's move back to the coin flip. Charlotte won the toss for the first pick next year. Jacksonville number two and Tom Coughlin, the, uh, the head coach of the Jacksonville Jaguars. A festive day down in Jacksonville. And uh, coach, uh, as you look at this year's draft, where might you have gone had you the second pick? And you see a guy like a Marshall Falk there. You, would you salivate at a player of that ability at that spot for a first year ball? club absolutely Chris you know you go by the value board and he was so highly ranked it would be very difficult to pass him up I think however you have to understand there's two different scenarios one with the quarterback and one without the quarterback coach and this is I'm not asking you to even grade players and, and no one's gonna hold you to exactly what you say here as far as position goes but all things being equal building a ball club from scratch with your first draft what type of player Maybe what side of the ball, or maybe even more specific than that, might you go for, all things being equal, with the second overall pick? Well, I think, first of all, again, you have to start out with the quarterback. And once you have the quarterback in place, its impact players on defense would be the direction that I think you'd have to go in. Then as you move along, of course, talking about the defensive ends or the, your, your pass rush people, move on into your running back corner wide receiver area, people who can put the ball in the end zone. Uh, and it's just, uh, again, as you study the draft today, you can see these kind of things happening. We've had some great runs uh, with the defensive line and the offensive uh, linemen going in spurts. Wow, you've, you've had a lot of fun down there. You, you guys are the only ones with computers here at the, at the, at the helmet phones uh, here in New York. I know you guys are doing a mock draft, and a, it's going to be weird for you not having a ball club to get ready here to, for the next season, but you'll swing into action uh, soon enough. Good luck, Tom. Thank you, Chris. You think a different philosophy? Remember the Bengals with their first pick took center Bob Johnson. Yeah, there it is. Football, Jacksonville, believe it.